a walkthrough of 15 plus smart annotations and drawing tips for the new Pages slash iWork update for iOS. Check it out. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to create a new drawing within Pages. So simply hit the plus button, select the shapes panel, and then tap where it says drawing at the bottom. You can do this with your finger even. And now you're gonna see a new bounding box is created and you can actually use your finger to just simply draw within that bounding box. Um, now you can also use the Apple Pencil to do so. So do like that. But once you start drawing with the Apple Pencil, when you've uh, created a new drawing, you're not gonna be able to control that anymore with your finger, as you can see there. Uh, the Apple Pencil takes over. And if you wanna use your finger, you can do that to sort of pinch in and pinch out things of that nature, but you're not gonna be able to draw within that bounding box. Something to keep in mind. Now, let me show you another way to start a new drawing. I'm gonna close out that side panel. Now, another way to start a new drawing is directly from the Apple Pencil itself. Um, so, if you tap and hold on the screen with your Apple Pencil, like this, it's gonna automatically create that bounding box and you can start drawing in there immediately. Again, you're not gonna be able to use your finger because you started uh, using the Apple Pencil and the pencil takes over. Um, here's one thing to consider though, you cannot tap and hold on the screen with just your finger to start a new drawing. It just doesn't work that way. So if you wanna start a new drawing with your finger, you're gonna actually hit the little plus sign and then under the shapes panel, tap where it says drawing and that will create that bounding box for you. Now within Pages, there are basically two types of documents that you can work with. You have your typical word processing document, which is any of these templates here, basic reports, whatever, etc. And then you also have something a little different called a page layout document. And page layout documents are different because, as you can see here under landscape, this is a page layout document. These are different because the text does not automatically reflow. The text is static, meaning it doesn't move, it doesn't reflow based on what's on the layout or what's on the canvas. The text stays where it is. Um, so with that in mind, drawing on these page layout documents is a little bit different. So let me just give you an example. We're gonna open up a blank book here and watch what happens when I start drawing within this page layout document. It's gonna be a little bit different than what we saw earlier. So if I tap and hold here, notice there is no bounding box. So you can just literally draw anywhere within this canvas and you're good, right? Just like that. So no bounding boxes within a page layout document that differs of course from your typical word processing document. So just something to keep in mind. Now when drawing, you have several tools available to you. You have your pen, your pencil, your crayon, your shape fill tool, your eraser, your selection tool, um, and you have your color selector as well. Now, when you're drawing, you can access additional options for the selected tool by simply tapping the tool again like that. Now, here you can change things like the opacity and you can change the size. So you have the smaller, and it goes all the way over to the right for the largest size there. And different tools have, may have different options. It just depends on the tool itself. So for instance, the shape fill tool does not have the size selectors, obviously, and the eraser tool has some different options as well. So something to explore for you guys um, to learn more about these tools, simply tap on them again once selected. Now let's talk about how to erase a drawing. Of course, there are a couple of ways to do so. You can just tap on the drawing and tap delete, delete it outright, and that will delete the entire drawing. Or you can go in and edit that drawing, use the erase tool and erase certain parts of the drawing like that. Or if you wanna erase entire strokes, you simply tap the erase tool, select the little X button at the very right, and then you just tap on the stroke and it will delete that entire stroke for you like that. So quite a few different ways to go about deleting your drawings and erasing your drawings within pages. Now, as you might imagine, there are lots of different color options that you can choose from within a drawing. So of course I can draw with the default black color like that, but if I wanna change colors, I simply tap here and you can choose from a wide variety of different color options just like that. 
but you can also take it a step further by customizing your colors. Simply swipe over like this and you have a color wheel so you can find the exact color you're looking for. So if I want this, this nice green hue, I can choose that. I can change the opacity and get it right like I want it. And you can change the lightness or darkness. And then once you've settled on that color, you can simply drag or simply draw on the canvas like this and choose your color. There's even your most recently used colors are going to show up here uh, so that you can choose recently used colors just like that on the fly. Uh, another really cool thing is this eyedropper tool. So if you select that, you can simply drag across a color to apply it. So if I know I want to use this green color again, I simply drag across it and now I can start using green. Now, what if you've zoomed in and you want to hide these drawing tools so that you can draw on that portion of the canvas? Because right now you're kind of, you can't really see what's going on, right? Well, you simply tap this little button next to the done button and that will hide the drawing tool so that you can draw on that portion of the canvas without it being obstructed. Simple. So how do you edit a drawing? Well, it's really simple. All you need to do is simply tap on the drawing with your Apple Pencil and you can start editing that drawing. Or you can simply tap and hold with your finger and select Edit Drawing to start drawing with your finger. Now, how do you resize a drawing? Well, super simple. All you do is you take one of the handles and one of the corners or the sides and simply drag like that. Now, what about moving this drawing? Well, again, very simple. All you do is you tap and drag just like that. Tap and drag just like that with your finger. So let's talk about some more advanced techniques. You can duplicate, you can separate and resize a stroke within a drawing using the supplied tool set. So I'm gonna simply tap on this to go into editing mode here. And then I'm gonna select this tool right here, which allows me to select various uh, strokes within the drawing. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about duplicating. So, so to duplicate a stroke, I'm simply going to select a stroke like that and then select duplicate. And now I have a separate stroke just like that and I can just move it over like that. Now I can do the same thing with this stroke here. I'm gonna select that. And I can actually separate that stroke into a separate drawing just like that. So it's now a separate drawing. And then lastly, I can resize a stroke within a drawing uh, much the same way. So I'm just going to simply tap on that drawing, select our selection tool, and I'm going to select this and I'm going to resize. And now I can use the, the little handles inside to resize that particular stroke. You can see it's not actually an eye, it's just a bunch of squiggles. Uh, so that is how you both resize, separate, and duplicate a stroke within a drawing in pages. So let's talk about the fill tool, which is a very interesting tool that allows you to create a filled in shape, but not just that, it also allows you to fill in already existing shapes on the canvas. So to use it, you simply draw your shape like that and it creates a filled in shape. But you can also tap inside of already existing shapes to fill in those shapes just like that. Now let's talk about smart annotations. To add a smart annotation, you simply tap on the screen like that. But if you don't already have an object or text on the screen, you cannot add an annotation because those are linked to either text or objects. So if you simply tap on the screen without any uh, text or objects on the screen already, it's gonna ask you if you want to create a new drawing instead of adding an annotation. So to add an annotation, you would have to put in some text first. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're simply gonna tap on the screen like this and and I'm going to add some text. I'll just type in 925 Mac, just like that. So now we're going to be able to add some annotations or a smart annotation to this because we have something to anchor it to. So you simply tap on the screen like that. It goes automatically into smart annotation beta. And now I can use that to mark up this text using smart annotations. So I can draw any arrows or whatever the case may be. Whatever I need to do to highlight the objects on the screen, I can do that with ease. Now, the reason why these are called smart annotations is because it's not just a layer that your annotation sits on top of, but these are actually anchored to existing objects or text on screen. 
So to prove this, if I go in and push this text down, notice that the annotation follows the text wherever it is. So this is anchored to that text, hence the name Smart Annotation. Now I'm going to show you how to delete an annotation. Uh, it's actually very easy. All you need to do is simply tap on the annotation and select delete like that. You're going to tap on this one. Uh, you don't want to actually tap on the text, but just tap on the annotation and then select delete and your annotations are gone. There's actually one right there. You might not be able to tell. It's really small. Tap on that and select delete. Now I'm going to undo this and show you another way to delete annotations. And that is by going into the edit mode like that, and then just selecting erase all. So that will erase all the annotations. I'm going to undo, and of course, we can also use our eraser tool and just simply select the annotations that we want to erase just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to move an annotation. And it's super simple. All you need to do is select your selection tool right here, and then simply drag around the annotation that you wish to move. And you can see it sort of have that shadow behind it and you can just simply tap and drag and move your annotation wherever you wish to move it just like that same thing goes for here uh, you can select that whole annotation and move it over just like that now similar to drawing you can also manually edit and select annotations with just your finger uh, by going to the menu so if you tap the little ellipsis button in the upper right hand corner and select smart annotation beta now you can actually control these annotations or add annotations with your finger just like that instead of using your Apple Pencil. So you can go in and select an annotation like that and move it over however you wish. Uh, but as soon as you start drawing with your Apple Pencil or as soon as you start interfacing with your Apple Pencil, then you can no longer use your finger. So just keep that in mind. Now how do you toggle your annotations on or off for a document? Well, simply tap your View Options button and then tap the Smart Annotation switch, turn that off, and now you can disable all of your annotations. They are still there. You can just turn them back on just by doing that. So how do you export a document with Smart Annotations intact? Well, to do so, you simply select export and you need to choose PDF. If you choose RTF or if you choose Word or EPUB, your annotations will not be there. If you want to keep those, you need to select PDF and we'll do so right now. Let's just go into print view and you can see that your annotations are still there. So again, that has been a look at 15 plus smart annotations plus drawing tips for pages slash iWork for iOS. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.